history is full of stories. Any memorable event, person, or location has its own unique story. Sometimes history comes in the form of textbooks, while other times it can be a folktale. The line of truth becomes blurry whether history is recounting facts and figures or if it is crafting a compelling tale. Historical fiction has the opportunity to take events, time periods, or famous people from the real world and insert them into a made-up scenario. The crucial element is to capture the essence of reality. You can learn from fiction if it represents reality. The book I want to introduce today plays with historical fiction in a really interesting way. Uh, Zora and Me by Victoria Bond and T.R. Simon uh, it is a reimagining of legendary author Zora Neale Hurston as a child. If you don't know Zora Neale Hurston, she published novels about racism and the social divide in the early to mid-1900s. She became an activist and part of the Harlem Renaissance in the early 1920s, but one thing that made her work extra special was how she used her hometown of Eatonville, Florida as a backdrop for many of her stories. The location helped set the tone and establish a community, making Eatonville its own quasi-character. Uh, Zora and Me attempts to capture the same essence. It showcases Zora's ability to tell detailed, exhilarating stories, uh, and Eatonville's sense of local community, and um, it has a historical realism, like about the racism, while also still telling a story for kids and most likely introducing them to a classic literary figure. Um, the actual plot of Zora and Me is about a group of friends who um, become convinced that a local man can turn into an alligator. And when a murder happens in the town, they become convinced he is a half alligator man. Uh, they track down clues, they sneak around at night, and try to get to the bottom of the murder and what they call the Gator King. Uh, the story is told from Zora's best friend Carrie's perspective, and if you haven't guessed, Zora is the one who first told the Gator Man story. All the kids, including Carrie, are unsure if they should believe Zora, but she is such a fantastic storyteller, it's hard not to. So I'm going to read a section of the book that captures that essence of Zora's storytelling ability, the reaction of the other kids, and the backdrop of the local town community. The, there is a uniqueness to the location, and Zora fits right into it. So um, it's a, just a few pages, so I, I hope you enjoy it. Um, what kind of whistling? Ralph Hardiman asked. His eyebrows raised like clothespins were keeping them open. Strange sounding, not like any bird or person I ever make, Zora said, but that wasn't the worst of it. The night started getting dark and misty, and the fireflies started disappearing. Soon I couldn't make out a thing in front of me until I got near Mr. Bedeer's house. Then what happened? Teddy and I asked in unison. I was surrounded by white fog, but not thick like clouds, nah -uh. It was stringy like spider webs. She suddenly waved her fingers at us like they were daddy long legs, and half the circle jumped back, but nobody laughed. Then, as fast as it started, the spiderweb fog disappeared. I was flat on my belly in wet grass, right close up to Mr. Badir's porch, in the dark. I didn't even realize I'd gone that, that close. I lay there for a long minute, still as a stone, trying to steady my eyes on the glowy light inside the house. Half a dozen voices... What did you see? The screen door swung open, so I paused for effect. Out of the light stepped Mr. Badir. Where his nose and mouth should have been, he had a long, flat gator snout. A gator snout, we all shouted, even Stella Brazil, in spite of herself. Zora nodded slowly. That's right, she said. Mr. Badir looked like a gator man. Man body, gator head. That's his secret. That's how come no... That's how come no gator can kill him. One thing about gators that folks outside our parts don't usually know is that they make loud hissing sounds. Not all the time, only when one of their young is in trouble. It's a call to arms, and it sounds like a cross between birthing pains and dying pains. Mr. Badir, a carpenter by trade, just like Zora's father, was fishing in Armstead Lake one time in a tiny dugout canoe they had built for himself when he accidentally cornered a young gator. 
An older gator caught sight of this and started up that hissing sound. Mr. Badir, no fool, knew exactly what that meant. Next thing he knew, three grown gators were in the water and swimming his way. But he didn't panic, not the way I heard it told. He let the gators get close to his boat, then threw a bucket full of fish he caught right at them. It distracted them just long enough for him to jump in the water and swim like the dickens ashore. The three gators smashed his boat to pieces, but Mr. Badir lived to tell the tale, without a scratch on his peanut-colored bald head. If any other man in the town had survived the same experience, he would have crowded about it all over creation. Not Mr. Badir, no. No one would have known about it at all if Mr. Clark hadn't seen him carving a new canoe and asked him what happened to the old one. Everyone knew Mr. Badir to be a quiet and honest, and no one doubted the story for a minute. Still, some folks ran to the lake anyway and found the splintered pieces of the dugout canoe washed up on the shore. All of Eatonville looked at Mr. Badir a little funny after that, so it didn't seem so far-fetched that Mr. Badir could actually be what Zora said he was, half gator, half man. Well, then what happened? Stella Brazil snapped the question, angry at herself for being curious. What do you think? I jumped up and ran, but the whole way home I could hear a creaking sound of a gator opening its jaws and clapping them shut. Teddy blinked. Did he follow you? he asked, nervous, like it had just occurred to him that Mr. Badir might be gaining on Zora and the rest of us even now. Zora didn't have a chance to respond. Our teacher, Mr. Calhoun, stepped out of the stoop of the schoolhouse and rang the bell. The spell was broken. As we all ran inside, the kids shouted things like, Ah, oh, Fibber, you crazy, Zora, and you ain't see no such thing. All right, don't believe me then, Zora said, but when y'all could have been playing kickball, you were standing around like boards listening to me. That alone is proof I'm telling the truth. And she beamed, as proud, of, as, proud as if they had given her a medal for bravery. <sighs> so, as you can tell, Zora is a fantastic storyteller. At least, that's how the book captures her in, in this. Even though there is probably little evidence to whether she told a similar story or if anything remotely similar has happened, Zora and me captures the essence of a grand storyteller. As the book goes along, the mystery of the Gear King hits its climax far before the end of the book. Instead of the mystery being the crux of the plot, the story delves into real themes of history. Zora and Carrie have their first-hand experiences witnessing the racial and social divide. They realize how serious the barrier of their culture is and how much bigger there are things to fear rather than the Gator King. In some ways, this is akin to a coming-of-age story. As in the beginning, Zora and Carrie are fun-loving kids with a spark of adventure, but by the end, their eyes have been opened to the real dangers of the world. A reader might have similar experiences while reading this novel. Zora and Me is written for a younger audience. And while it absolutely captures the fun mystery vibe, it also has a very serious realness about it. A middle school reader will be drawn in by the mystery, but will learn about racism, community, and the concept of telling the truth. Zora and Me is well acclaimed and won the Coretta Scott King Award for New Talent in 2011. It is a wonderful example of the ability of creative historical fiction to engross an audience and capture a piece of history while telling a fictional story. I would seriously recommend this to anyone 12 years plus. So uh, that is Zora and me. And um, I uh, hope you enjoyed my book talk. Thank you.